Well, hello to you all. Hymns of Hope as we continue in this series. It wasn't my favourite hymn, but it's a hymn which often comes to my mind when certain things happen. I know it seems a long time since this coronavirus, COVID-19, has struck the nation, struck, struck the world. And as we remembered yesterday, it's been 70 days, perhaps more for some who have been in shielding and self-isolation and others who have been practicing social distancing and at the outset we didn't know what would happen to us all how it would affect us as individuals as families and as a church and i just wonder uh, from the outset as one evening i went to bed and it seemed so dark and quiet and it was pretty fearful and then i woke up the next morning and the sun is shining bright and the birds are singing their song. And I realised again that God is still in control. And it was the second verse of this hymn, the hymns of hope. We know it from the first line. Loved with everlasting love, led by grace, that um, love to know. But it's always the second verse that people quote. Heaven above is softer blue. Earth around is sweeter green. Something lives in every hue that Christless eyes have never seen. Birds with gladder songs all flow, flowers with deeper beauties shine. Since I know, as now I know, I am his, and he is mine. And I flung open the curtains, that song came, and immediately the words that I am his, and he is mine, reassured me, and gave me hope that no matter what I would face that day, no matter what would come upon me in the next days and weeks, that I am his and he is mine. We were reminded to us recently from the verses in Isaiah that the Lord has called us, he loved us and gave the Lord Jesus Christ to die for us. You are precious to me, he says, and I will uphold you because you are mine. Now, I don't intend to look through the whole hymn but I looked at the first two verses, two lines of the first verse. Loved with everlasting love, led by grace, that love to know. And I read a story of a man who had attended a minister's conference and he was enjoying the listening to God's word, which is being preached with grace and power. And he said this, and I'll quote him. He said, the preacher that day, who was a dear friend, he paused and said something that riveted me. He quoted some words of Geert, Gerhardus Voss. The reason God will never stop loving you is that he never began. Voss was reflecting on Jeremiah 31 verse 3. I have loved you with an everlasting love. He goes on to say, I suppose that I have read those words many times. And in prayer had blessed the Lord for loving me with an everlasting love. But the truth that Voss drew out from those words, he said, all but overwhelmed him. He said, I knew that God is love. It was nature, character. He said, I knew that God had displayed his love by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. But when he read again that the reason God will never stop loving you is that he never began. He said the words love with everlasting love, led by grace that love to know, meant so much more to him. You see, there are times in our life when perhaps we doubt where God is in various situations. Perhaps you've heard words where someone has said to you, I love you and I love you forever. And they've let you down and walked away and walked out. Perhaps there are circumstances now which affect us and fill our hearts with fear and we don't know. Perhaps the war of uh, sin in our lives. You know the old hymn which says, when Satan tempts me to despair and shows me all the guilt within, up would I look and see him there who's made an end of all my sin. We rest on Christ and his finished work and we rest on God's love from eternity 
to eternity, loved with everlasting love. And perhaps there are situations where the sin in us we just fight against day after day and it seems to have a rule over us but we know that rule has been broken and we are at union with Christ in his blood and resurrection. We are at one with him and we know that he is with us because he has loved us with an everlasting love and there are many things which will ebb and flow and we will doubt God's love and we will doubt our commitment to him. And yet we remember those words, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Love with everlasting love, led by grace, that love to know. I could go on, there's lots in the in the hymn which we could look at. At the third or the last verse when he speaks those words, he says, you know, um, his forever, only his, who the Lord show me shall part. Nothing Remember Paul saying, neither height nor depth nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Heaven and earth may fade and flee, firstborn light in gloom decline. All these things that we see will pass away and the sun will dim in its brightness when the glory of the Lord will outshine all things. And he says this, but while God and I shall be, I am his and he is mine. Perhaps you'd like to look at the hymn in your own time. Perhaps Google it and listen to the tune and sing along with it. And perhaps you'd go to your Bible underline Jeremiah 31 verse 3. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Loved with everlasting love. Led by grace. That love to know. It's nothing of us been led by grace the grace of God which loved us from eternity and will love us to eternity because he is love he is mine and I am his let that encourage us and be words of hope today <laughs>